In this tutorial, we're going to discuss designing with monolithic substrate scalable models for mini circuits LTCC filters. Mini circuits and monolithics have collaborated to develop a library of such filter models. Simulation models were developed based on broadband measurements. These models are equivalent circuit based and scale with the substrate properties. The initial library covers five high pass and 15 low pass filter models. The link shown here will give you access to the Monolithics Fender Partner page for mini circuits. Free download and use is being sponsored by mini circuits from this page, but these models are also included in the Monolithics Complete Library available for Agilent ADS and other simulators. Next we'll look at working with these models within Agilent ADS. The example that we have set up here will be available for download from the Mini Circuits MVP landing page. Also, there are a number of examples that you can find if you have a Monolithics Complete Library installation. If we start with a new schematic, then we just point the palette browser to the Monolithics System Level Component Library for Mini Circuits filters. We'll see there's 20 filter models from which we can select the LFCN3800 that we'll be working with in this example. When you place the model, pins 1 and 3 will be the input and output ports respectively, and pins 2 and 4 are to be grounded in typical application. If we double click on the model, we see there's inputs for the substrate thickness, dielectric constant, metal thickness, and loss tangent of the dielectric material. If we click on the help button, we will pull up a model information data sheet included with all monolithics models. This data sheet tells basic information about the model features, measured to modeled agreement examples, different types of technical notes about the way that the models were developed. In this case, the range of substrate properties over which the model can be scaled along with the footprint layout information that was used in the test fixture. The reference planes for the model are shown with the arrows here. What we've done here is to set up two instances of the filter where in this case we've added 50 ohm line width M line elements. We've used a program called LineCalc to calculate the appropriate line width of the two different cases for the 10 mil board and the 20 mil board. These will be two different line widths and those line widths are in turn different than the solder pad width that's used in the filter layout. So we've included an M-stop element to represent the discontinuity between the 50 ohm line width and the solder pad. This will be maybe a little easier to see if we go to the layout. In this view we see what the layout looks like now with the 50 ohm lines added to the 10 mil board case and the 20 mil board case. So we'll go ahead and simulate the filter and here we see the S11 and S21 filter simulation over 1 to 10 gigahertz. If we assume that we had a specification for example of S11 being less than minus 20 dB from DC to 4 gigahertz, the 10 mil mounted filter would meet that spec. The filter mounted on a 20 mil board would not meet that spec. To illustrate how we might match the 20 mil filter, let's assume that we can include a non-50 ohm line matching section on either side of the filter. We've set this up with a variable block so this microstrip line has a different width and length than the 50 ohm line which is on either side of the whole structure or as used in the above. So what we'll do now is just to tune the, the width and the length of this matching section. Let's start with the width and see whether it wants to go up or down. It seems like we want to go to a larger width and we see that starting to come in. We're looking at getting better than 20 dB at 4 gigahertz which we were able to do there and let's see how the length affects that as well. So we can tune the width and the length and try to find some good compromise there. So here we see the layout of the filter on a 20 mil board with 50 ohm lines in and out and with a simple matching section which turns out to consist of two low impedance sections. Let's briefly look at one other variation on this example and this variation is included in the examples that are in the model ethics complete library set in a typical installation this will be in your C drive under a model ethics folders examples workspaces this example file we're gonna see a variation of 
the setup that we were using. And this variation actually has the example we were looking at with the transmission line matching section and also a matching with a tapered line. This variation uses optimization instead of tuning. So when we set up the initial simulation, we see without the matching section uh, the same results that we were looking at before. And what we're going to do is to enable an optimization block that's been set up to optimize the dimensions of the transmission line matching section and tapered matching section in separate circuit configurations. So with the optimization block activated, we can click on the optimize, enable optimization button, and we can watch the progress over here. After the optimization has been completed, we see that both the transmission line section and tapered line section provided a, a good improved match, meeting the goal at 4 gigahertz of 20 dB or better, up to 4 gigahertz. And then we can just update the design, the schematic. And let's just take a quick look at the layout. And we see here we have the tapered line optimized section and the other transmission line section looking very similar to what we got from tuning. In summary, many circuits and model ethics are partnering for improved customer design success. We demonstrated how to use the models to optimize a board layout for compensating for solder pad effects and other board effects.